Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. This is Lindy from Love Create Celebrate and I have the most exciting project happening today. We are sneaking into someone's house, doing a whole feature wall while they're away and they're coming back to see the space. <laughs> if you're wondering, yes, they do know we're coming in, but no, they do not know which room we are tackling. It's gonna be the funnest project. I cannot wait to show you what space we picked out and I can't wait for you guys to follow along. We're gonna show exactly how we do the feature wall with some simple molding you can buy at Home Depot and we're gonna show you the whole tutorial and then we're gonna show you the reveal and let you see my friend's reaction to her brand new space. Stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. Here are some of the spaces that we might do. Option number one is this little reading nook off the side of their dining room. I haven't done a corner wall, so it'd be really fun and totally different for us. Option number two is the wall in their beautiful dining room. This room already looks beautiful and having a feature wall might just finish off the space. Option number three is their daughter's bedroom, just a big blank wall with tons of potential. And option number four is their daughter's nursery. There's lots of beautiful decor already in this space. So in the end, we decided to tackle both this corner wall and the dining room wall. She has no idea what wall we're doing and definitely no idea that we're doing two of her choices. So it's gonna be really exciting. So the first thing we had to do once we had decided which room we were tackling is remove all of her furniture very gently so that we had some space to work and so that we wouldn't get drywall dust everywhere. So before we could put the molding and tape up on the wall, I had to sketch out a few ideas of possible molding patterns that we could put up. So I didn't put the moldings on the middle part um, and I kind of thought visually you could see them go from this wall to this wall. This one I put a really thick line because I was potentially gonna make um, a shelf there, depending on how it looks. But so that is one design idea. And this is my drawn on mirror and sideboard piece. And the second idea I had was this one, slightly different pattern, um, but the same thing where it kind of leaves this wall and hops to that wall. And you can see how they connect here. Uh, but they're two separate designs. So we're gonna put some up on the wall, decide which one we like better, and also decide if it means we're gonna have to do molding on this little wall around their hallway opening. But let's see. So our first step was to put our pattern up on the wall using frog tape. This is just a way for me to visualize what it's gonna look like in the space and make any changes before there's actually molding up on the wall. We didn't use exact measurements for this, but we did use a speed square to make sure that we were keeping all of our lines at 90 degree angles, and we used a laser measuring tool to make sure that we were keeping the tape straight as we put it across the wall. When we did any of the horizontal pieces in the design, we just used a long laser level as our base for the tape. We taped out the entire design on the dining room wall and then we were able to move to the corner nook off the side of the dining room. To keep the spaces connected visually, I actually had the design continue from the dining room wall to the corner nook. And in order to do that, we had to take some measurements of approximately where the moldings landed and transfer those measurements to the new wall as we were going. We debated whether or not to put molding on the wall with the doorway, but in the end decided to keep the spaces as two separate defined spaces, and so we opted not to put any moldings on that little wall. Next, we had to measure out exactly how many molding pieces we need, so Russell used our laser distance measuring tool, which I will link to in the description below since we use it quite a bit, um, and he measured all of the lengths of each of the pieces of tape, we added all of that up and then added an extra 10% just to make sure we would have enough moldings for the wall. Next, we marched ourselves and our three children over to Home Depot so that we could pick up our moldings for the new feature wall. 
Using moldings for the wall saves lots of time and it actually only came to just over $100 to do all of the molding on both walls, so it was really affordable too. What we ended up buying was doorstop molding from Alexandria Molding. This molding was the perfect size and shape for the feature wall that we wanted to do. We bought pieces that were 3 8 of an inch by 1 and a quarter inch and 7 feet long. While we were at Home Depot, we picked up a few other things we needed, including sanding blocks, painter's tape, and some extra wood glue. Hey guys! So our feature wall is all taped out, and we have the saw, and we are ready. It is step two. She's got the saw, she's got the materials, and she's got, got the I've got the muscle. man. <laughs> How did we both know that joke was coming? Day two, we're putting the molding up on the wall. This should go pretty quick, so today we're going to get the molding up, we're going to get it puttied and caulked, and then let that sit, and then the next step will be painting once Yay. all that stuff drives. So. so, stay tuned, we'll show you how we're putting the feature wall up. We wanted to start with the longest continuous piece in the pattern, so we used our laser measuring tool and measured that piece to start. All of the cuts for this molding wall can be done using a miter saw, and most of the cuts are actually gonna be 45 degrees. Our first piece of molding is gonna sit right on the baseboard, so we're cutting a 45 degree angle right at the bottom. We also flip the board around and cut a 45 degree cut on the face of the molding, and we'll show you why in just a second. Our first 45, you can see, sits right on top of the baseboard here. We're just using our speed square to make sure that we have it at a perfect 45 degrees before we set it in place. Once we knew we had the right angle, we were able to start nailing the molding in place with our cordless nail gun. We first did a couple nail holes at the bottom of the molding and then continued to check our angle a couple times as we went up higher on the molding. So you can see that this piece didn't quite reach the whole length of the wall. This was our longest piece of molding and this is where we had cut our 45 on the front face and that's so that we can make a really nice even joint when we add the other piece of molding. Since the corner of this wall wasn't an exact 90 degrees, we also had to check the angle there to make sure that we were making our moldings flush with the other wall. It actually turned out to be a 45 degree angle, which made our life much easier. So we would always recommend doing that compound cut on the wall first. It's a compound cut because it has two 45 degree angle cuts, one on the face of the molding and one on the edge. Then we took a measuring tape and measured the exact distance from the wall to the outside edge of the molding so that we would know exactly where to make our 45 degree cut. Now you can take that piece of molding out to your miter saw and cut your 45 degree angle. Remember, it's always easier to cut your molding a little bit long and cut it down slightly after than to be too short and have to recut the whole piece. In our case, our first cut actually was a tiny bit long, so we did end up shaving off another saw blade and then it fit perfectly. Once you've got your piece in place, double check that all of your lines are good and then you can use some wood glue to attach the two pieces of molding together before nailing the second piece in place. The other thing we did while we were nailing moldings to the wall is always try to make sure we were finding the studs first. Often we marked the studs on pieces of frog tape just so we could follow them up the wall, but we wanted to make sure to get enough of the nail holes in the studs as possible. So that's all there is to it guys. It's just the same process over and over again either cutting straight edges or cutting 45 degree angles, measuring your spaces, and putting them up wherever you think looks good. 
if you have any vertical or horizontal lines in your design, we just used a long level to make sure that they were straight and then cut them out of 45 when they met the other molding pieces. Once you get into a groove, the whole process goes fairly quickly. It only took us about two to three hours to get all of the moldings on to both of these walls. Once all of your moldings are up, you can start filling in all of those nail holes. All you need is a flat putty knife and some drywall compound. And you also want to make sure to fill in any of the gaps between moldings or any of the spots where two moldings were joined together with miters. And finally, anywhere that your moldings meet a wall or a ceiling, those need to be filled with caulking instead of drywall compound. So make sure you get a nice caulking that matches the color of your wall and fill in any of those gaps before you're ready to sand and paint. Once all of your drywall compound is dry, you can start to sand away the excess putty. We actually used one that cures in about 15 minutes, so we were able to go back and sand the same day that we had put it up. Before you start your painting, you're gonna wanna make sure to either wipe down all of your edges or vacuum away the excess drywall dust so that you don't get any mixed in with your paint. And now you're ready to paint, which is the final step of this makeover. Depending on what color you're using, you'll probably need at least two coats of paint. We used a small paintbrush to get around all of the edges of the molding, and then I actually had two different sized foam rollers, one small one and one regular sized one, to get into all of the larger sections of wall. If you're using a dark color, it might be helpful to do one coat of paint ahead of time, but we were using a light color and we knew that we were gonna have to nail, sand, and repaint the moldings. So we just did all of the painting once it was up on the wall. Guys, I'm so excited. It is reveal day. My friend is on her way home from the airport right now, and we are gonna show her the space. I'm so anxious to see what she thinks, and I really, really hope she loves it. Um, but she's gonna see her feature wall here. She doesn't know what room we did. She doesn't know what wall we did. So it's gonna be a complete surprise and I can't wait. Stay tuned for her reaction. She's home from vacation. <laughs> We're gonna show her her feature wall. Do you have any idea? Or do you, do you have a guess as to which one we did? Something upstairs, maybe. <laughs> but I'm so excited, wherever it is. We'll see, we'll yeah! see. Okay, let's go look, let's go see. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, my... <gasps> oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. Upstairs. And I love even like it looks so much 
Better. I just put a couple of my pieces in just to like. For us to stage it. Yeah. No, I'm I'm getting that exact same thing. Oh my gosh, we did the whole day! doing this space like this space was already okay, so pretty no, this is freaking amazing <laughs> or did i just swear no, i oh. i'm so glad you like it oh, <laughs> oh it's amazing holy snap what? <laughs> so i think she liked it if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comments below and as always, hit that bell so you can be notified of more great DIY and renovation videos.